Let's move on to a different example. In this case I've got three tubes surrounding a sphere and I want to demonstrate the ability of PBR to turn anything into a light source. So what I've done is put basic material on the sphere and the floor while the three tubes have a constant shader applied. Let's have a look at that constant shader and as you can see it's got a very high level for the color, more than one. And the effect of that is to make it a light emitter. And what we should see is the items contributing to the specular highlights in the sphere. So let's lay down our render note. And change it to render using physically based rendering and then let's do a preview render well it's not quite what we might have expected. We're getting some specular highlights resulting from the tubes, but we're not really getting a diffuse contribution. It's not brightening up the shadow, for example. And the reason for that is, although by default the specular sampling takes samples in the environment, that's not true for the diffuse lighting. As you can see here, we've got a glossy limit of 1, but a diffuse limit of zero. Let's up that to one. And now we're getting a much better result. We can see we're getting light throughout the scene as a result of our illuminated tubes. So that demonstrates how to turn objects into lights. Obviously we'd want to re-render this scene with much higher sampling to get a smooth result. We can see that there's some specular reflection of our lights here in the sphere, even though the sphere itself has not got a reflected material, reflective material on it. Let's move on to a more complicated scene. We're going to look at a slightly more complicated scene that we're going to render user P using PBR. And I've got set up here a number of mugs with slightly different colours. And before I render, I need to create a light to illuminate the scene, and I need to create a material for the mugs. So we can do that by adding an environment light to the scene, which I'll do by control clicking there. And the environment light works particularly well with PBR, and we can set up what's called an area map for the light we have a look under the light tab, area light options, we can select the option use area map and then I'm going to use a map that I prepared earlier which is just a grey background with some white squares on it. We visualize the effect that an environment light will have in our scene. Well one option is to lay down a very simple object and use that to test the reflections of the environment light. So I'm going to turn off our mugs and the floor and I'm going to drop a sphere into the scene at the default position. Let's have a look through our camera and we're going to need to enlarge this sphere quite a bit in order to see it properly. And it needs to have a reflective material. It happens that I've got one already here in the palette. Let's add that. And then in the output network, I need to lay down a mantra node. And in the properties render tab, I need to set it to physically based rendering. And then in the render view, we can have a look and see what that looks like. Well, as you can see, it gives us a good indication of where the environment light highlights are going to be reflected. 
note that the bottom half of the sphere here is not reflecting anything. And the reason for that is because by default the environment light just uses half a sphere to project the area map. If we were to turn on using the full sphere, as you can see we get this full sphere reflected. You can change the orientation of the area light here on the transform tab and we could for example rotate this by 40 degrees and we can see that the position of the highlights has changed. Let's rotate it more and they've changed again. I'm going to revert back to the defaults. So now we've got the reflection set up we can turn back on our mugs, let's get back into the scene view and turn back on the floor and turn off the sphere. So let's now look at signing a material to our mugs. In fact I've got one already set up here but I'll show you the process of signing it. I'm going to use a reflective displacement material I'll drag that into the palette and then let's go into our object which is lots of mugs and I'm going to give it the reflective displacement material and let's have a look, I'm going to up the base colour let's up that by to about 0.8 and let's reduce the reflection down to about 0.3 and reduce the spectral intensity a little bit. Now I've already got a mantra node here set up for physically based rendering so we can go into our render view and do a preview. And this is going to take a rather long time to render out. So we can speed it up by just looking at part of the render, focusing in on that. So let me stop this. And we can select the part of the scene we want to render by shift dragging inside our render view. By the way, you can get rid of it by shift clicking outside the view. So let's create an area of interest that should start re-rendering and progress a little bit more quickly. So that's producing a reasonable result already. Maybe the inside of the mug here is a little bit dark still. And we might also want to change these reflections so that there's a little bit of displacement. So let's go into our shader. And I'm going to increase the base color to 1. And I'm going to go to the displacement tab or rather I'm going to start at the Properties tab and I'm going to turn off True Displacements. The reason I'm doing that is because it adds substantially to render time if we try and do True Displacements because the renderer has to take each of these surfaces and dice it into micro polygons and then put all of those through the Ray Tracer. So unless you absolutely need them, True Displacements are a bad idea. And I'm going to add some noisy displacements and I'm going to give it a frequency of say 2 and I'm going to give it a very low displacement value 0.02 and let's see what that looks like 